So this is our intraoral assessment, and the first thing we're going to do is explain the procedure to the patient. Ms. Cruz has volunteered to be our patient today. Ms. Cruz, we're going to do an intraoral cancer screening. Um, was there anything your last dentist was keep, keeping a watch on or anything you're concerned with in the mouth that you need me to look at? No. Okay. If at any time I'm in there, you know, feeling around on the different structures of the mouth and anything's uncomfortable to you or bothering you, just let me know so okay. we can take a look at that. Okay. Okay. So guys, naturally, you would be in full PPEs for this assessment. You would have your blue gown on, your mask, your goggles, and your gloves. However, for the video purposes, if I put a mask and all of those PPEs on, then you guys can't hear what I'm saying. So we're going off cuff a little bit and keeping the mask off, but we'll have gloves on. So when we do an intraoral cancer screening, you need your patient in a supine position for you to be able to see everything. Unless your patient has a contraindication for a supine position. An example of this could be a patient with uncontrolled high blood pressure or any cardiac issues that may not be able to sit all the way back where the feet are at the same level as the heart. Ms. Cruz has no contraindications as such, so we will lay her back in a supine position. You, of course, would be using the overhead light for this assessment, but I need to keep it off for the video or you won't be able to see anything. Everything illuminates a little too much. Okay, so let's get inside the mouth. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start looking at the lips and the cheeks. So we are going to go into, enter into our patient's mouth, retract back the cheeks. We're gonna take a look at her buccal mucosa all along the mandibular. and the maxillary. We are also going to be looking for frenums or any frenum tears. We have a good frenum right here I'm gonna point out to you guys. Right here, up in this maxillary arch, this labial frenum. Now patients can also have multiple frenum throughout the vestibules, both upper and lower. So if I come down here and then pull back the lip, you can actually see some frenum right here as well. So you do need to look both upper and lower at the frenum. We looked at the vestibules. We look at the lips. We looked at the cheeks visually. So the next thing we're going to do is palpate. So what we want to try to do is not make the outside of our patient's face wet while we do this. So what we're going to do is we can insert a thumb or you can insert two fingers while the palm is on the outside as we move around in a circular motion. We're looking for any lumps or bumps or things that feel abnormal, both on the left side dry off my gloves here and on the right. Okay. Next thing we're going to look at is the gingiva. So I'm going to add a little pointer here for you. We'll look at the upper maxillary gingiva. Some different structures to look at. We will look at the Gingiva both on the maxillary and mandibular arches looking for color changes, abscesses, lesions, growths. You're also going to point out to your instructor three different structures. You're going to point out the free gingiva which follows the gum line, so free meaning not bound by bone. We're also going to look at the attached gingiva which is going to be further up. That would be gingiva bound down by bone and the interdental, which is the gingiva directly in between the teeth. And we would look at every single tooth in every single area of the gingiva. The next thing we're going to do is check for salivary function. So we've got three salivary glands to check. We have a parotid on this side, a parotid on this side, and then a sublingual. So let's do the sublingual first. Go ahead and open for me, Ms. Cruz. Lift the tip of the tongue. Thank you. So we're going to dry the sublingual gland first and then we're going to perform a milking of the duct where we stimulate 
the salivary gland duct till it produces saliva, and that is normal function. Let's check the parotid. So we have a parotid on the upper left, which is by your maxillary first molar. So I'm gonna dry that off. I'm trying to really retract here so you guys can see. We're gonna dry off the parotid and we're going to milk the duct until we see saliva. Good. And we repeat on the right side. So we're gonna go up by the maxillary first molar. I'm actually gonna turn you a little bit this way towards the camera. We're gonna dry off the parotid gland. I'm really gonna retract so you guys can see, hopefully. She has a great parotid gland right here. I don't know if you can see it, Miss Bamie. Mm -hmm. Okay, good, right there. That's her parotid right there. And we're just milking the duct till we see saliva expel from the duct. And if we didn't see saliva expel, we would be concerned with a blocked duct. All right, next thing is occlusion. So we're gonna have Miss Cruz open and bite together. And if you'll turn towards the camera just a little bit, Miss Cruz. What we're gonna look for is our angel's classification. We're gonna look at the maxillary mesial buccal cusp of the first molar and how it articulates with the tooth directly below it. And as you'll see, Miss Cruz's cusp, mesial buccal cusp of the maxillary first molar is sitting right into the buccal groove of the mandibular first molar, which gives her class one occlusion on the right. A patient's occlusion on the right can be very different than what you see on the left, so you have to check both sides. So since I'm a right-handed clinician, I'm gonna use a mirror to check her occlusion on the left. Open for me, Miss Cruz. I'm gonna insert a mirror, retract back her cheek, have her bite together. And again, I will look at the mesial buccal cusp of the first molar and how it articulates with the mandibular first molar. And you'll see that her buccal cusp is sitting right in the buccal groove of the mandibular first molar. So she has bilateral class one occlusion, both right and left. The next thing we're gonna look at, if you'll stay biting for me, Miss Cruz, is her uh, midline. So what we can do is we can actually draw a line from the tip of Miss Cruz's nose to the very center of her chin. And what we wanna see in this imaginary line right here is we wanna see that teeth eight and nine, so your central incisors on the maxillary, that that interproximal area is right in that imaginary line. We can also see that the interproximal area of eight and nine is articulating nicely with the interproximal area of 24 and 25. She does not have a midline deviation to the right or the left that we talked about in lecture today. You can relax, Ms. Cruz. All right, the next two structures we're gonna look at, and these are gonna be really hard for you guys to see in the camera, so I'm gonna verbally walk you through this. The two structures we will look at is the maxillary tuberosity, which is behind the very last molar on the maxillary arches, and we'll look at the retromolar pad, which is the area of tissue directly behind the last molar of the mandibular arch. If you'll open for me, Ms. Cruz, to see the maxillary tuberosity, you guys are gonna to have to use your mirror. So what I'm gonna do is retract back the cheek, and I'm gonna look at the maxillary tuberosity behind the very last molar on the left side. I'm also gonna palpate to make sure there's no growths or lesions or tumors. And I'll do the same thing on the right. Insert the mirror, visual inspection of the maxillary tuberosity, and then a palpatory technique on the maxillary tuberosity. The next thing is the retromolar pad. So we're gonna drop down to the lower arch and we're going to visually look, let me get a pointer here for you, Miss Bamie. The maxillary, uh, the mandibular um, retromolar pad, pardon me, is behind the very last molar in the lower arch. Is that hard to Can see? She, yeah. You wanna to turn towards she, yes. you? Okay. That'd be better. Can you see right here, this area of yes. tissue? Mm -hmm. This is the retromolar pad on the left side. I visually look, I palpate. I'm gonna repeat the same thing on the right. I visually look at the retromolar pad and I palpate. Okay, so let's move from the lower arch. Let's come back to the palate. We're gonna go to her palate. So if you can lift your chin up for the camera, Miss Cruz, 
and we're going to look at some different structures here on the palate. She is a perfect patient because she has a palatal tori. You guys can all see this visually right here. If you were to palpate it, you would realize it's very hard. You would also palpate the soft and hard palate on the left, the soft and hard palate on the right. Some structures you're going to have to point out to your instructor. One is going to be the fovea, which are the snake eyes. One is right here, one is right there. Miss Cruz has good fovea. <laughs> uh, the other thing that we will look at is the incisive papilla. That is right here. You getting a good shot of that? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. We're going to look at the median palatine raffe, which is that line down the midline. The rugae, which are our wrinkles in our palate, both left and right. And then the last thing we look at is the pterygomandibular fold. And that is going to be the fold of tissue that occurs from the maxillary down to the mandibular. Do you want to kind of zoom in or turn towards her just a little bit? Can you see my pointer? Mm -hmm. Okay. So this little fold of tissue right here. You see that nicely? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. All right, since we've got her here opening wide and she's a compliant patient, let's look at some structures in the oropharynx. So if you'll open for me, Ms. Cruz, and say, ah, I don't even have uh. to use a tongue depressor. She has a uvula, which is that little drop down right there. Our palatine tonsils sit in the middle of the anterior and posterior pillars. And if you don't have a patient as compliant as Ms. Cruz, you would use a tongue depressor to push down the tongue to see the oropharynx. You can relax, Ms. Cruz. <laughs> the last structures we need to look at are the structures of the tongue. So let's actually look at one of the most common places for oral cancer in the mouth, which is the lateral border of the tongue. So, if you could stick out your tongue for me, Ms. Cruz. Great. We're going to lasso our tongue, and you want to be gentle with your patients. Some patients, their tongues aren't very pliable, or they have a tight lingual frenum, so it actually hurts when you pull out their tongue too far to the right or to the left and too far out of the mouth, so be gentle. What we're going to do is we're going to pull Mrs. Ms. Cruz's tongue to the left. I'm going to pull back the cheek, so I can now see the lateral border of the tongue. It's a little ticklish spot, so be careful when you're palpating. <laughs> We're going to repeat the same thing. I'm going to move the tongue towards me, pull back the cheek, and now we can visualize the entire lateral border of the tongue. Okay, it's called lassoing the tongue. We are going to look at the dorsal of the tongue, which is the top. So, Miss Cruz, if you stick your tongue all the way out for me, if you don't mind. We're going to look at different um, uh, papilla on the tongue. The first is going to be your filiform, which are your most numerous on the dorsal surface of the tongue. Your fungiform are a little bit bigger papilla, and they are on the dorsal surface of the tongue as well. The foliates start to go off from the dorsal to the lateral border, and you'll see them along the side here. And then the circumvallate, this is going to be very hard to see, guys, but this is in the very back of the tongue on the base of the tongue. And you'll be able to see this better in your textbooks, but it is in the very back. Um, amongst the circumvallate papilla are also going to be the sulcus terminalis, which is going to be in the middle of the V that the circumvallate create, as well as the foramen cecum. And if you can just verbally call that out for your instructor, that would be sufficient. I'm going to go ahead and have her stick her tongue out one more time. I'm going to palpate the body of the tongue as well as the base of the tongue, but be careful, that can gag quite a few patients. All right, let's look at the last two areas, which is underneath the tongue. So we're going to look at the ventral of the tongue, which is the back side of the tongue. Is that good for the camera? Mm -hmm. Great. And then the floor of the mouth on both sides. Let's start with the ventral tongue. So we are going to look at the lingual veins. You will see on either side of the lingual frenum. And then we're also going to locate the plique fimbrate. Let me see if I can find some good ones for you guys. I know I'm probably tickling her a little bit. The plique fimbrate are the hair-like projections. There's some right there. Hold that for the camera for a minute. Sorry. Kind of blurred. You want to retract back out? I did. Oh, you did? Okay. Is it unblurry? Mm-hmm. Okay, great. 
the plique fimbrate, hair-like projections here on both sides of the tongue. You're also going to palpate the ventral surface of the tongue. I might as well palpate the floor of the mouth while I'm down here too, just feeling on both the right and the left side. Now let's look at the structures on the floor of the mouth. There's two of them that you need to remember. One is the sublingual fold, which are, is the fold right here on both left and right side. Is that good for the camera? No. The fold, the fold, and then the caruncles. These are these little puffy areas right here on the uh, floor of the mouth on either side. And you can close and relax. And if you want to zoom the camera back out. All right, this completes our intraoral cancer assessment. Good luck, you guys.